In this video, we continue our discussion of linear regression. Recall that linear regression deals with finding whether or not two quantities are related. Now, as we do so, we had three follow-up questions. First, how are the two quantities related, positively or negatively? Secondly, how predictable is this relationship? Is it fairly strong or is it weak? And lastly, are the two quantities what we might call coincidentally related? This is correlation or expectedly related, causation. And the two quantities that we considered in order to see whether or not there was a relationship was the number of hours of sleep someone got the night before and the number of cups of coffee that they consumed. We had surveyed 10 people and the first person had zero hours of sleep and four cups of coffee probably pulling an all-nighter. The second person had four hours of sleep, three cups of coffee. Um, this person right here, number six, had seven hours of sleep and two cups of coffee. An initial way to see whether or not these two quantities, hours of sleep and cups of coffee consumed, were related was to create a scatter diagram. And it looks something like this. Again, this is the person zero hours of sleep, four cups of coffee, four hours of sleep, one cup of coffee. And it looked as if we could draw a line to somewhat fit the data. And we then sought to find the best line that would match up to this data. In other words, we sought to identify the regression line. The method we used was that of least squares, and it required a number of computations. Um, but in the end, we were able to find a formula to represent this estimated regression line of you know, negative 0.39, that's our slope, times x, plus 4.15. These values were rounded. This estimated regression line then answered the first question for us, how are two quantities related? So the first thing we always do with a regression line is find the estimated regression line. For our specific example, we have that one right here. Um, the next thing that we can do with a regression line, however, is to use this estimated regression line to make a prediction. So let us consider the following example with our data set. Predict the number of cups of coffee consumed by someone who had five hours of sleep. So let's just briefly look at our scatter diagram for a minute. If someone had five hours of sleep, identified right here, we could go up to our estimated regression line and use this to predict the number of cups of coffee they consumed. If we trace it over to our vertical axis right here, it looks as if they will have consumed slightly more than two cups of coffee. Well, let's actually verify it using our estimated regression line. So we will use the regre estimated regression line y prime is equal to negative 0.39x plus 4.15. This is our estimated regression line. Now, one thing to note is that I'm starting to use y prime here. And I'm going to use that notation here for a predicted value of y. But we don't make this x prime because we're not predicting a value of x. We will actually plug in an actual value for x. Specifically, we're going to plug in 5 for an actual number of hours of sleep that someone had the night before. So doing our prediction then, y prime is equal to negative 0.39. Again, this is rounded times 5 hours of sleep plus 4.15. Both these numbers were rounded. If we plug this into our calculator, we obtain the following approximation. 2.197137776 dot 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 but we can round that to 2.197 cups of coffee but since nobody actually counts 0.197 cups of coffee we can say that this person if they got five hours of sleep would have consumed approximately two cups of coffee. So again, once we determine how two quantities might be related with the regression line, we can use the regression line to make a prediction. And this prediction matched fairly well with our sketch by hand. We now move on to the second question. How predictable is this relationship between two quantities? And in answering this, we're actually going to talk now about the sample correlation coefficient. As we seek to determine whether the relationship between two quantities is strongly or weakly related, what we will do is we'll look to see how close the actual data points are to the estimated regression line. Now, data that is 
closer to the line would have a more predictable relationship or a stronger relationship. And data points that are more at a distance from the line might suggest a weaker or less predictable relationship. Compare the two examples below. Observe that they both have the same estimated regression line for the two different sets of data. But in this example on the left, the data is much closer to the line. In other words, the line does a better job of predicting. It will have less error, so we anticipate a stronger relationship between whatever quantity is measured along the x-axis and whatever quantity is measured along the y-axis. Whereas in this example on the right, um, the regression line will not do a very good job of predicting a value since the distance is much further from the estimated regression line to the actual data. So this would be an example of a weaker relationship between the quantity measured on the x-axis and the quantity measured on the y-axis. But to more rigorously determine how predictable a relationship is than simply looking at a scatter diagram, we're going to turn to the sample correlation coefficient, which, which is typically represented by the lowercase letter r. And here at the bottom of the screen is the formula for calculating r. n times the sum of x, y minus the sum of x times the sum of y over the square root of n times sum of x squared minus the sum of x value squared times the square root of n times the sum of y squared minus the sum of the y values squared. A few things that we should observe about this are first that the numerator for this formula that's the upstairs in the fraction, is actually the same as the numerator for calculating the slope. And remember, the slope is the value of a in our estimated regression line. What's the significance of that? This means that both my sample correlation coefficient r and my slope a will have the same sign, positive versus negative which means that when r is positive, then we have a positive or direct relationship. And when r is negative, then we have a negative or inverse relationship between our two quantities. A third thing to observe about the sample correlation coefficient r is that the value of r is always going to be between negative 1 and 1. So let's go ahead and calculate the sample correlation coefficient r for our example of number of hours of sleep and the number of cups of coffee consumed to determine how predictable the relationship is between these two quantities. So pulling up the formula for r then, which is this mess, we can substitute in the values from our data set. So again, we had surveyed 10 people, so n is equal to 10. The sum of xy was 75.5, etc. Um, plugging all of this into the calculator, never do this in your head, we obtain the following approximation for r. r is approximately negative 0.8864 dot 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 dot, or we could round that to negative 0.89. So it does indeed fit between negative 1 and 1 as we were told it would. But this is a number. What does that tell us about the strength of the predictability of this relationship? Is it a strong fit? Is it a weak fit? Here is the general rule of thumb for working with a sample correlation coefficient r. If r is equal to negative 1 or equal to 1, that's what we call a perfect fit. Think the relationship between Fahrenheit and Celsius there will be a perfect relationship, linear relationship, between those two. But if your value of r is, say, close to negative 1 or close to 1, that's what we'll define as a strong fit. Um, observe with our specific value of r here, negative 0.89, we could say that's fairly close to 1, so that means we could classify this as a strong fit or a fairly strong relationship. But on the other hand, if r is close to 0, and it may equal 0, that's what we'll call a weak fit. And you go, well, what about what's left over? What's in between? If r is, say, midway between negative 1 and 0, or midway between 0 and 1, then this is what we'll classify as a moderate fit. Notice that in this chart, we don't provide specific definite bounds for your sample correlation coefficient r. And that's why we call it a general rule of thumb. So on a number line, you can think about the fact that your correlation coefficient r will be between negative 1 and 1. Here, it would be a perfect fit. 
on either endpoint, when it's kind of near those values of negative one and one, that's going to be a strong fit or a strong relationship. Um, at zero and close to zero, that's going to be a weak fit. And in the areas between, this is where we have the moderate relationship in terms of the predictability between your two quantities. We now seek to answer the third question. Are the two quantities coincidentally related or what we call correlated or are they expectedly related? Is there actually a causal relationship between the two? So that moves us into our third point right here, correlation versus causation. And the one thing to note about this is this point right here is perhaps the most important thing to know and it's more common sense than it is mathematics. Not many things in life are very simplistic. So trying to argue that because R is close to one or negative one means that one quantity causes the other to happen isn't going to be true. So looking at our specific example of number of hours of sleep and number of cups of coffee, we saw that our sample correlation coefficient R was equal to negative 0.89. Be careful. Just because R is close to, in this case, negative one, does not mean that the number of hours of sleep causes you to drink a certain number of cups of coffee. Remember, the name for this letter R is the sample correlation coefficient. Two quantities can have a strong correlation without actually sharing a cause and effect relationship. One scenario in which this might be true is if you have two quantities that have a strong correlation that are both caused by some third external quantity which we hadn't measured. That could be what is causing both of them. And so the two quantities might have a strong correlation, but they don't actually share a cause and effect relationship. A great website to check out if you want to explore the idea of correlation versus causation is the following. The following example is taken from that website. Suppose I told you that we had a sample correlation coefficient R of negative 0.932856. Again, according to our rule of thumb, this would suggest, since it's close to negative one, that we have close to negative one, that we have a fairly strong fit between the two quantities. But do not assume this means that one quantity causes the other. What are the two quantities? The first one is the number of honeybee colonies in the United States. And the second quantity is the number of lawyers in Idaho. So here, it doesn't make sense that an increase in the number of honeybees would lead to a decrease in the number of lawyers in Idaho. So be careful. Just because your sample correlation coefficient R might be close to negative one or to one does not mean that one quantity causes an increase or decrease in the other. This is the difference between correlation and causation. Keep this in mind as you answer the third question. Are two quantities coincidentally related or expectedly related? Then more often than not, we simply can establish that two quantities are correlated.